G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoy today's episode, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Posted by user firmad374, titled, Am I the asshole for not telling my wife the real reason why I married her? To give some context to my current situation, I need to provide some background information. About 14 years ago, I, male 42 today, got my ME and G degree, but was struggling to find work. I did eventually land a job working for a medium-sized company, but even then I was still struggling financially as I owed so much debt in student loans and lived in a pretty expensive city. It was admittedly a pretty low point in my life. I'm sure many people can relate to the feeling that you've done so much schoolwork and then don't have much to show for it. I did, however, build a good relationship with my boss, male 84 today, as in my mind, this was the easiest way to earn promotions and in turn, a high income. Eventually, I met my boss's family. One thing that quickly became obvious was that his daughter, Rose, female 39 today, liked me a lot. I didn't think too much of it at the time because I thought mixing my professional and personal lives would be a bad idea. Also, I didn't reciprocate her feelings in any way though for obvious reasons, I was always exceptionally polite to her at every interaction. Long story short, my boss's wife, female 78 today, found out, and I started getting invited by my boss to his house pretty regularly for things like dinners, etc. Throughout all of these, my boss and his wife would somehow always steer conversations in ways that led to me talking to Rose, or would leave the room for some reason or another, just leaving the two of us together. Later, my boss would even tell me things like how I felt like family and he'd be happy to recommend me to higher positions etc since his wife and daughter are so fond of me. Needless to say, I started talking more to Rose and within weeks I got a promotion. While I will admit to not feeling much of a romantic connection with Rose, I did put a lot of effort into fostering that relationship and she was happy with the attention I was giving her. After a few months of this, we were married. As you can imagine, my career really took off then. However, I did leave the company roughly two years after getting married, and with the recommendations I was able to get from my former boss slash father-in-law and several other people he introduced me to, I was able to secure a good position elsewhere. Today, I can happily say that after being married for 12 years and having three children together, there is no other woman that I'd rather spend my life with. Because I feel like this, I've always felt that my primary motivator for getting married to Rose is no longer relevant. That being said, I had lunch with two of my longtime friends, Michael and Wilson, a few days ago. We haven't seen each other in about a year, so it was a nice opportunity to catch up. I'd like to add that Michael and Wilson are both familiar with my situation, as we were in regular contact back then. At one point in the conversation, Michael asked if Rose ever found out the real reason why I decided to marry her. I told him, of course not, and that her finding out would be needlessly painful for her. Wilson agreed with Michael, saying things like honesty and transparency were the main things he and his wife picked up from couples therapy, and that it would be better long term if Rose found out. I reaffirmed to them that Rose not knowing would be best for our family, and the conversation largely ended there. That being said, I've started to think more about what they've said and do feel a little guilty. Am I the asshole? In the comments, Screwy Year says, Don't ever tell her. It's probably been in the back of her mind the whole time. I'm sure someone in the past might have tried to use her that way. My mum didn't love my dad. She married him to get away from her controlling family and to move us to the US. They've been married over 50 years now and they love each other. She's told me the truth, suspects my dad knows, but will never tell him. I know they would each sacrifice their lives for each other. It's a lie, but an acceptable one, and you're the asshole for marrying her for profit, but never let her know. Focus on the now. I'm glad you got away from her dad's company. That probably reassured her somewhat. The two of you have built a beautiful life. Don't mess it up over two friends that you see once a year. Your friend might end up spilling the beans to her. Be careful. Exactly this, and I don't think OP has considered that since the friends know, there is nearly 100% guarantee that other people have been told this as well. Wives, family members, etc. 
Normally, I am for honesty, but this would break her. And as long as you love her now, don't tell her. But you did a really shitty thing. You're the asshole for using her back then. I guess I'll just be echoing the sentiment of all those people as well. You're 12 years deep into sunk cost fallacy OP. You obviously did use her because you admitted to not loving her at all, but you did love the power and money that you got through the relationship that you fostered with her. If you want to maintain the status quo, you probably want to follow up with those friends and be like, hey guys, please don't spill the beans to her, because it seems as though that's where this is headed, if I were to guess. But yeah, definitely you're the asshole for how this relationship started and how it's continued. Update. I just saw my previous post this morning and was surprised and a little overwhelmed by the amount of responses I received. Nonetheless, I do think it is appropriate to provide a quick update. I had time to do some self-reflection over the past few days, and my conclusion is that I'm probably the luckiest man in the world to have such a fantastic wife and wonderful children. Rest assured that I have no intention of my wife ever finding out the real reason why I decided to marry her. Also, I'm very confident that my two friends won't say anything to my wife. I failed to mention it earlier, but I also have some ammunition on Michael's marriage, and given that Wilson is in couples therapy, I'm highly doubtful he'd say anything. Even without this, I can't imagine either of them overstepping such a boundary. I'm sure many of you are wondering how they knew in the first place. The real reason they knew was because we were all housemates at the time, and they were able to witness the situation unfold firsthand. I guess you could say that while I'm largely an introverted person, I still talk a lot, especially with my friends. I do still feel guilty about my initial motivation to pursue my wife, but also very grateful for how things turned out. I'd like to think she's also grateful. Over the last few days, I've been trying to turn this gratitude into action to make my wife feel appreciated. Yesterday, I brought her breakfast in bed, and in the evening after work, I brought her a surprisingly expensive bouquet of flowers. Tonight, we have reservations for her favorite restaurant, and a sitter who will watch the children. I know these things are minor in the grand scheme of things, but I want to do more thoughtful things for my wife. This will be my early New Year's resolution. In the comments, Draken's Pride says, I don't think this is the relationship killer that you think it is. There's a few ways to rephrase the whole story to make it sound sweet and romantic. I'm so grateful to your dad for encouraging me to spend time with you. Sometimes I think about what my life would have been like if he hadn't done that. Knowing me, I might have remained lonely and clueless forever. But instead, I have you, and I am the luckiest man in the world, and I hope to spend the rest of my life proving that to you. You know, I was thinking something along the lines like that. Then you'll never have to worry about it coming back at you. Mutually assured destruction is an odd way to have friendships. I'm pretty sure like everyone with a close friend will know something that would destroy certain aspects of their life if they started blabbing about it. Quote, I'm very confident that my two friends won't say anything to my wife. I failed to mention it earlier, but I also have some ammunition on Michael's marriage, and given that Wilson is in couples therapy, I'm highly doubtful he'd say anything. This gives me a lot of pause. Michael won't say anything because OP also has something on him and his marriage, which sounds kind of awful. Why do both of them have relationship-ending secrets they're keeping from their wives? Wilson not saying anything because he's in couples therapy is also off, but in a different way. Dude already said that couples therapy has taught him a lot about the importance of honesty and open communication in relationships. If anything, he's probably more likely to tell. This is totally going to blow up in his face at some point. Yup, and I highly doubt he's going to share that with Reddit if and when that happens. So uh, I stay committed to the fact that people share way too much of their lives on here, but I am absolutely here for it. I'd imagine the people that are keeping relationship-ending secrets from their significant other is probably a lot higher than we would think, but hey, we're never going to get data for that. We don't really know. Cheers to another 12 years, OP. Our next post is by user one nefariousness 8522 titled, I, 25male, was planning to propose to my girlfriend, 26 female, but she admitted after a night out that she cheated on me and is begging for forgiveness. How do I go about this? 
I've known my girlfriend since we were in kindergarten. She's helped me through thick and thin, through periods of depression, when my parents were being abusive, when I lost my grandparents, through it all. She is genuinely my hero. She's also so warm-hearted, caring, selfless, and the best person I know. About a month ago, I told her parents and mine that I wanted to marry her, and we agreed to rent out our favorite amusement park, where I would propose to her, which is also where I confessed my love to her. It's still rented for the 29th of August. It was all so perfect, until yesterday. My girlfriend said that she's going to a karaoke event with her female friends. At 2am today, she returned, clearly drunk, and collapsed in bed. This morning, she woke up in tears and apologized profusely. After she'd calmed down, she explained that she was drunk and decided to have sex with another man at the party after the karaoke and regretted it afterwards a lot. When I asked why she'd do that, she said that she was so drunk that she completely blanked on the fact that she was in a relationship with me. That sounded to me like she would have sex with other men if she wasn't with me, so I asked if she was unhappy in bed but she reassured me that that's not the case and couldn't ask for anything more from me and regrets everything she did. I had so many more questions that I wanted to ask, but my heart completely broke and I began crying. She hugged me and said that she would do anything to get my trust back and constantly asked not to break up over this. I said that I needed some time to think and went into a separate room. I've now been sitting in this room heartbroken for many hours now and don't know what to do. She said that she'd do anything to get my trust back, so I have hope that there's something that I can change to ensure that she never cheats on me again, like always going with her when she goes outside, but that feels really controlling and disgusting to me. Is there any way not to break up and still have trust again that she will never cheat on me again? If I do break up though, I don't think I can ever love anyone like her again. Please try to understand and comprehend that I've known her since not long after when I was born. We were often in the same class, doing the same schoolwork together, playing together, eating together, doing everything together. I spent many years trying to confess my love. We spent many years living, loving, smiling together. She feels like a part of me by now. How can I just throw that part away and pretend I'll be fine? I'm saying this because I know it's common on this subreddit to basically just say move on, but I really don't think that's possible for me. So I'm really looking for responses that suggest how we can stay together with rules to ensure that this never happens again. I would also like to hear suggestions about whether I tell mine and or her parents of the incident. I have to tell them to cancel the amusement park event, so I probably will have to tell them what happened. But I could excuse the cancellation as me not feeling quite ready yet, or something like that. I'm mainly considering this because I don't want her parents to be mad and yell at her or be cold towards her because, as I explained before, she's always been my hero, and I don't want someone who has helped me so much get hurt, especially because I've experienced how much that hurts. In the comments, Has422 says, You guys have been together your entire lives? You can't remember not having each other in your lives. You've spent years living, loving, and smiling at each other. You do everything together. You are a part of each other. And she blanked on the fact that you existed when she was drunk. Do I have that right? Yes, it seems that you do have that right. He means nothing to her. Like, absolutely nothing because she was drunk. This is the exact opposite to the post that popped up a few weeks ago, where one of the two was so blasted that they didn't even recognize the other, but had the wherewithal to say, I'm in a relationship, don't touch me, when they went for a kiss. My boyfriend has actually done that to me before when I tried to take his jeans off to put him to bed. <laughs> he slept in his jeans on top of the duvet and wouldn't let me near him. That falls under the, if they didn't want to, they wouldn't category, which applies even under the influence. Your boyfriend is a real one. OP, thank her for her honesty and for saving you years of pain. I agree. She showed OP courtesy by confessing, and he should have courtesy when he shows her the way out. Knew her since birth, but hey, she just forgot she was in a relationship when some random comes knocking. Yeah, tell her and her cheating-enabling friends to have a nice day. Edits, seriously. You guys have known each other so long, the relationship probably doesn't have that sizzle anymore and is more of a best friend state. That guy gave her that, and she just forgot about you. 
as suggested, part with respect, and a friendship can be saved long into the future. Update So, here's the update. A day after the post, I decided to ask for clarification as to what exactly happened. I was mentally prepared for every possible response, except the one she gave me. From all of the information she gave me, I've tried organizing the most important information below. Before the karaoke, the boyfriend of one of her friends, whom I'm acquainted with but not particularly close with, decided to join last minute. Let's call him Richard. During the karaoke, her female friends kept daring her to chug beers. She told them to stop daring her after three drinks, but they kept insisting and making her feel bad for saying stuff like, you never drink much anyway, so just for today, try to have some fun, and stop ruining the moment, and other stuff. So she continued, can confirm that my girlfriend normally drinks far less, two beers max normally. She says that she remembers drinking 10 beers in about an hour. She says it's likely she drank more after, but that she doesn't remember anything after the 10 drinks, except waking up back home. She says that the drinks very likely made her blackout drunk. In my original post, I didn't provide much detail about when she returned from karaoke due to the word limit on posts, and me not thinking that the information would matter much. Regardless, the day she returned, her female friends were carrying her by her shoulders, and I had to also carry her to her bed. Her legs were barely moving, her body was not holding upright, and she wasn't able to form coherent sentences. Although, until then, I didn't have any experience with a person who blacked out. I can only imagine that her situation was a blackout. So I do also believe that she got blackout drunk. When she woke up, she had 10 missed calls from her friends. When she called back, her friends explained what happened while she was blackout drunk. During the karaoke, Richard said that he needed to talk to her, my girlfriend, for a moment to strategize on how they'd sing as partners. The friends decided to continue the karaoke while Richard and my girlfriend strategized. After half an hour, neither Richard or my girlfriend were back, so they started checking for where they were. Richard wasn't picking up any calls. After an unknown amount of time, Richard's girlfriend saw Richard having sex with my girlfriend. Of course, Richard and his girlfriend broke up, and then all of the females brought my girlfriend home. After finding out about this, my girlfriend was mad and shouted, How dare he take advantage of me! I was in the basement before I saw my girlfriend cry, which is why I didn't hear this. But her friend said that he's saying she consented. My girlfriend says that she was speechless and hung up because she couldn't believe she consented to that and started crying because she believed that she cheated on me by consenting and thought our relationship was over. She didn't know that legally, if a person is drunk, consent or not, you cannot have sex with them. I was surprised she thought this because, even if you don't know the laws on this, how could it possibly be morally, or even solely logically speaking, fine to ask for someone's consent when they're barely able to communicate or think? I was really shocked by this story and started feeling really bad for my girlfriend. I explained to her that this is assault, not consensual sex. I hugged her and tried to comfort her and asked if she needed anything and how she was feeling. She said that because she doesn't even remember anything after the drinks, she doesn't feel any of the responses normally felt after assault, like trauma. She said that she's mainly disgusted by Richard, but also mad at herself for losing control so easily because of a dare and hurting me like this. We went to a police station to report this. The investigation is still ongoing. Also, to be honest, I was still a little suspicious that the story could have been made up or misconstrued. So I went to the karaoke place that they went to and explained the situation and asked if I could see the camera's footage. They agreed, and there was footage of the exact situation that I was told playing out. There was also footage of Richard asking my girlfriend, sex? And my girlfriend responding in a very drunk and barely audible voice, I like. That bastard really thought that that was consent? I have of course also provided this footage to the police. Although the police's investigation is not concluded, the evidence I saw is, in my opinion, enough for me to believe her. My girlfriend volunteered to explain the situation to both of our parents because she wants to take accountability for her actions. Her parents were very apologetic and sweet about the situation, which I appreciated a lot. 
My parents brought us both together to make sure that all of us were on the same page, and we made a big group hug, and my dad said something that really resonated with me. This situation is really shitty for everyone, but I know that love will prevail in the end. Unfortunately, it was too late to go back on the theme park that we rented that day, so we, me, my parents and her parents agreed to proceed with it, but without the proposal, and invited a bunch more people. I told both mine and her parents that I would decide when the time is right to tell her that we initially rented the amusement park to propose. I told her about a week ago when things were more back to normal, and her feelings seemed very complicated as one would expect but I think her summary of her emotions being devastated but understanding is pretty good. Thanks to the advice of many Redditors, we have decided to take couples therapy, which has been really helpful in helping us understand each other and get even closer. She proposed herself that she never wanted to drink alcohol again. She said that it never even tasted that good anyway and never made me happy in the long term. She said that she mainly just drinks to fit in, but now plans to stop. So far, that goal's been going great. We also realized that we both always want to do events like karaoke together, but sometimes worry about bothering the other. Even on the day that she went with her friends, she wanted to go with me, but thought that I looked busy, so went alone. I was not busy. We've worked hard at being more communicative and expressing our feelings more, and it's seriously been great. I've also told her about my Reddit post. I want to thank everyone for all of the advice, even if it was a little bit mean. We are both so happy right now, and I have faith that despite this bump in the road, we'll keep riding this car forever. And yeah, that is definitely not how I expected this update to play out, but honestly, OP, I'm very happy that you guys were able to come to an amicable solution to this one together. This is not how anyone wants these situations to go. This is worst case scenario possible. And I do hope that you guys get justice brought against the abuser in this case, because Christ, what an absolute piece of shit. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.